Hickok 45 here. And who says the 40 caliber is dead? Because I happen to have one under my shirt. Yes. I'm going bowling with it right now. And who knows what else <laughs> I might shoot before I run out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. I'm going to cry. Hey, no, I'm not either. I found another magazine. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yes, 40 caliber, the Glock 23. You probably read the title. You probably uh, figured out this is something about a Glock 43 that you've never seen before, a Gen 5. Yes, another excuse to do a Glock, another excuse to do a Glock 40. Is that it? Uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, I'm going to tell you I was a little surprised at this Glock 23. There's a little surprise involved here. Some of you might not be aware of yet. And uh, I, where did I find this? Oh, I know. I picked one up in a shop somewhere and thought, hmm, didn't know that. So I went right online and, and uh, contacted BudsGunShop.com and requested one. And here it is. Got the MOS model so we could put a uh, you know red dot on that if we wanted to rmr and which i generally don't don't do but uh yeah this is an interesting gun and the reason well yeah you know i'm always interested in a glock well the thing that i discovered i didn't know after all these years and by the way it is a 30 year anniversary for the 40 smith and wesson aren't you excited some of you 40 haters especially <laughs> are not excited are you uh this is an old Glock. This is Gen 2. Gen 3, sorry. Gen 2. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing my generations. But it's, a, yeah, Gen 2. Uh, the Gen 3 is when they put the uh, uh, finger grooves on them and that sort of thing. But this is an old Gen 2. It even says 40 SW on it. You know, which they took off soon after that because they didn't want to give Smith & Wesson advertisement on their guns. That's got to be the ultimate insult, isn't it? To have to put... <laughs> You know, another gun company on your, your slide. But uh, that's an old one, and you've seen that before. And that one belonged, in fact, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, it was it the Missouri, it was a police agency out of Missouri. I bought this one used, of course. Uh, it was a, what, an uh, alcohol, bear? I can't even see it. But uh, anyway, it was a, a federal agency, I think, or a state agency uh, gun issued, and a lot of police agencies used the 40 Smith & Wesson, some still do. Uh, for a period of time there, it seemed like all of them did, right? I mean, everybody from your local police department, the FBI, the, uh, the state agencies, it was uh, the gun of choice, Glock 22 or Glock 23, Glock 27, sometimes a combination of all three. And uh, many of them have since gone to nine millimeter, right? Uh, not big news to anybody, but some you know, still use the 40 and there's nothing wrong with the 40 cartridge. This is a Gen 4 here and uh, it's, it's a firearm I, I still like. It's like a Glock 19, isn't it? Same, same gun. Same as the Glock 19, except in 40, right? And uh, on this one, can I shoot it before I blab anymore? I just love shooting these things. Uh, you know, I haven't shot 40 much lately. <laughs> it's kind of, it's neat to get back to it. It really is. Oh, what's he doing sitting there? Yeah, I'll get him off there. <laughs> Let's go over the hill and hit the gong just for heck, for kicks. Nice. And a buffalo? <laughs> Boom. Red plate swinging. You can see it swinging. That's something a nine, that's a heavy red square plate. That's something a nine won't do. Swing it like that. Okay. Say what you will about the 40. It's a bigger bullet. It's a heavier bullet. It is going to carry more muzzle energy, right? Okay. So may not be any more effective than a nine but it is a bigger, heavier bullet. It's that simple. Uh, well, it's not that simple. A, we could discuss that and debate it uh, a lot, right? And, and I, I'm not uh, going to take either side of that with religious fervor. That's not what this is about anyway. I could argue either side. Uh, so, the, the, uh, so, first of all, my big surprise about the Glock 40 was that it's a thicker slide. 
Yeah, that was the thing about the Glock 23 all these years was that it was a Glock, basically a Glock 19, like I said, chambered in 40 caliber. And you had pretty good capacity in, in a bigger bullet in a Glock 19 size firearm. And of course, the same as you know, you got the 26 versus the 27, the Glock 17 versus the 22 in terms of size, you know, being the same, and then the 23 versus I don't have a 19 out here. Okay, so they all they did Glock was is chamber the basically you know these modified enough to chamber the the 26, the 19, and the 17 in the 40 caliber and gave them different model numbers, right? Same dimensions and everything. A barrel had a bigger hole in it, of course, but virtually the same firearm. Different magazines. Um, so I was surprised to see. Look at this. If you haven't seen this yet, and this, yeah, you know, already shown you that. It's empty. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from that, but there's a thicker slide on this Glock uh, 23 Gen 5. Okay. Now I. Uh, I got the calipers out and messed with it because I was curious how thick it was. It looked to be the same thickness as the Glock 21 and, you know, the Glock 20, Glock 30, you know, name them. Uh, it, but it's not quite that thick, but it, it's somewhere between the 9mm slide and the 10mm slides and the, the thicker, thickest Glocks, okay? That's where it fits. Now, my guess is, and I haven't looked at the, sometimes in the Glock catalog or website, you don't get accurate information, at least historically. Because I know when I was looking up the, the gap, you know, the Glock automatic pistol out of the 45 gap, uh, years ago, thinking, well, maybe that's something to consider. How, if it's the same size as a 19 and 45 ACP? And I look at the weights and the dimensions in their catalog at that time, and it was showing the same weight or same dimensions. I was like, hmm. How do they do that, you know? And so I actually wanted to pick one up in a shop one day and look at it, back when you could find a 45 gap. <laughs> and uh, no, nah, it was like this, it was thicker. I don't know how much thicker, but it was thicker. My guess is this is maybe the same uh, thickness as the gap. Uh, Y'all might know already, and, and that information is probably out there. But it's somewhere between the nine millimeter thickness and the 10 millimeter 45 thickness, you know, on the on the thicker Glocks. And I know now you can get, like, I've got a Glock 41, 45, and it's a thin slide, and I've got a 30S and all that, but I'm talking about the, the, the of the three basic dimensions of Glocks, you've got the 9 millimeter thickness, and it looks like you've got the gap, or the, uh, now, the 40 thickness, at least in the Glock 23, and then, of course, the thicker 20, I don't have that out here, okay? So you might not have been aware of that, so what's the advantage of that? Well, with this, now you've got a thicker slide, Glock 23. It's taken me long enough to get to it, right? The subject is this pistol, Gen 5. It is a 40 caliber. It is the midsize firearm. They still call it a compact, I guess. And thicker slide and all the Gen 5 uh, you know, features, if you like Gen 5. You've got the mag well down here swelled up and all that and, and, uh, and all the Gen 5 features. Now, one thing we noticed, John noticed it, actually, I hadn't even noticed it. The, uh, this is a Gen 5.9, I went back in and got it. Uh, you got this cutout, you know, in front because, you know, you got those swells, which makes it difficult. One thing I hate about the Gen 5s is if your mag is stuck at all, I'm used to just grabbing it right like that. Just, you know, hit, hit the mag release, of course. Don't try to rip it out without hitting the mag release. Not advised. But you can't get to it, you know, unless it's down here. Uh, but you did, you can grab it up here. Okay, you got that lip on the mag, and you can grab it up there. I guess Glock is trying to retrain us how to pull a mag out. I don't know. <laughs> Haven't been doing it right all these years. Didn't know it. Well, make sure I got a 9 millimeter mag in there. It doesn't like I shoot it, it doesn't matter, but this came with the Glock 23. You got your orange followers now, of course, and your I've been shooting random old mags here. But so when you put this one in, you got that lip on it, but guess what? You don't have that opening. How come you done that, Glock? Huh? What were you thinking? Uh, so I don't know. Maybe you like it better. Maybe, maybe you don't. I'm not sure. Uh, one thing about the Glocks and the newer Glock, well, for a long time, the mags drop. They're drop-free. They pop right out when you press the uh, mag release. Maybe they just figured you don't have to grab the mag. I mean, that's why they went ahead with the swells. When are you going to have to grab the mag? Our mags are so good now. Our guns are perfect. 
and they're going to drop out empty loaded half loaded whatever the mag will drop out just push the mag release not a problem you don't need to grab it <laughs> is that what they're thinking maybe so i mean it does look cleaner and all that and i don't know anyway that's one of my gripes about that i don't really need a mag well don't want one on a defensive pistol like that so so anyway you got the gen 5 characteristics okay so you, the biggest difference is a heavy slide that's the big news to me and of course all your gen 5 you've got you know your front serrations uh you got the slot for your rear sight easier to move maybe you've got uh the ambi slide lock uh you've got i think it's a little bit bigger rail up here you've got uh you know the finger grooves are gone uh yeah, i don't know what else i need to go into smooth trigger you know with your uh you know your gen 5 and then internally you got different is it's, when you look at it it's not that much different really but there's very little compatibility again if you're new to the gen 5 glocks or glocks in general the newest generation there's very little if any compatibility between it and the earlier generations so you really need to know what you're doing if you're just now getting into into firearms and into glocks uh, there's a little bit more compatibility between fourth and third and you know second and third and that that kind of thing first but uh once you get to generation five you got a different finish and uh you've got a lot of different things that just don't in fact i've got a a, a barrel a suppressor ready barrel that uh if it'll work in my gen 4 glock it won't go into the, the gen uh won't work right in the some of the gen 5s uh okay so anyway just be aware of that so for me uh i prefer the gen 4 it's my favorite you know i'm right i i may change my mind but i just don't care for the gen 5s as much okay now the, I think the biggest uh, topic of discussion really is this heavier slide. It, uh, one thing it does is it might render your holsters a little too tight. Uh, see, that's a Glock 19, Glock 23 holster right there. See, they wrote Glock 19 on it. I have to keep it straight. Holster makers don't do that. One of my biggest gripes. So many holsters, I have to figure out, write on them or something. And... Uh, you know, out in the holster. Sure, they do on the package, but who knows where that's been for 10 years. So, you see the difference there. And here's the Gen 4. Been funny if it wouldn't fit any, wouldn't it? Okay, clicks right in. That's a blade tag. I just happen to have that around, but that's kind of the story. Unless you have a leather holster, a flexible, uh, you may have trouble with your holster. All right. Uh, one I got on is I just put on one of these uh, Phobos that's designed for a Glock 20. Okay, and it, it's loose, but it... You know, it goes in okay. Like if you had to choose, this is what you'd want. Yeah, well, not too bad. That, that tells you though, it almost clicks in there tight enough. You could get by with that. And that's for a Glock 21 or 20. Okay. So, uh, one question you're about to ask, right? I hear you. Can you tell any difference? I can tell a little difference, but let's make sure, okay? Let's do our little shooting test. How's that? Let's shoot them both. And, uh, I'll remind myself what I think. All right, now I've got talon grips on that one, so I get a little different feel. But I'm going to shoot uh, back to back the uh, new Gen 5 and the Gen 4. Let's shoot the Gen 4. I'm going to register the feel of the recoil and the snappiness level, okay? Because the 40 is famous for being snappy, right? <laughs> That's a good shooting pistol. I think that'll sell. Let's try the Gen 5. Feels pretty good. Uh, you can tell the difference. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, less muzzle flip, uh, absorbs the recoil a little bit more. Imagine that. I, Let's see, I tested, uh, looked it up actually. I think it weighs three ounces more than a 19 or 23, roughly three ounces, I think. So you've got a heavier slide. So anytime you do that, you're gonna, you're gonna have less felt recoil, you know, less muzzle flip. So it, it's, uh, I mean, and you can feel it. And John shot them both and he will agree. He never agrees with me, but he did on that. Just kidding. Uh, so yeah, let me do that again. There, there's a difference. Uh, so if you're one of those humans 
who has uh, wanted to like the Glock uh, 23 or 22, I don't know, uh, but it's just way too snappy. This one's easier to hold on target, I'll, I'll have to say. Boom, see, it'll even kill a turkey or a ram, even though he won't fall, right? <laughs> and a buffalo and a gong. Yeah, how about, uh, how about something right here, like some play? Boom. It, uh, it takes away that, that snappiness, it really does. Uh, I love the old Glock 23, I always have. And uh, man, I shot the heck out of one of these early models I, to the point where I put so many thousand rounds through it, the locking block broke on me one day. Luckily, I wasn't in a gunfight, but... <laughs> Just, just a great shooter. Yeah, there's a significant, I don't know if significant is too strong a word, but there's definitely a difference in muzzle flip and snappiness level, okay? Now for carry, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not enough to really to matter much anyway. At, at the range though, if you're gonna take it out and shoot it a bunch, uh, you know, this would be a little more comfortable to shoot. It, it, uh, someone who has less experience shooting, uh, they might find this one more pleasant. Uh, but than than the standard one, okay, the older ones, Gen 4 or pre 4 okay. So, so there you go. Uh, there's always an advantage and a disadvantage, isn't there? A uh, heavier slide. Guess what? Get ready for this. It makes the gun heavier, and uh, it makes it thicker. It's not going to fit your old holsters. It's going to make it if you're inside the waistband or whatever. It's just it's just thicker. You know, it doesn't take much to make a difference, right? With weight and thickness on a handgun that you're carrying all day. Uh, so you got the downside, but when you're actually firing it, uh, you're, you would find it more pleasant to shoot and easier to hold on for follow-up shots and that sort of thing. The slightly added weight, the slightly thicker slide just might not matter to you. This could be, if you're kind of a 40 fan and have wanted to like it uh, more than you have liked it, this might be right what the doctor ordered for you because it's going to take away that, that, that I don't know if all the snappiness, I mean, all guns recoil some, but it, it really does affect that a fair amount, okay? It really does, and it ought to. And it, it will make it much more pleasant for you uh, to shoot. So it is a Gen 5. Uh, I, I'm not sure what I think about it. I, for me, for if I'm going to carry a 40, I'm just going to carry the standard, um, you know, because I like to think if it's only good for 30,000 rounds before something breaks, uh, so be it. Uh, but I like the fact that's one of the things that attracted us to it back us to it back in the 90, early 90s, was the fact it was the same size and you got the added capacity and the added uh, power factor. I was doing the uh, USPSA game at the time. I remember us being so excited, you know, having big talks about it, conversations about, oh, man, this 40 comes out. And if it is what they say, it's going to be so cool because we're always trying to reach major power factor to get the higher point value off the target. But you couldn't do it with a nine millimeter. You had to go to a 45. And, and with this, you still had capacity you know, and all that kind of thing. And so we were excited about it, and a lot of us went to it and shot it. And uh, I told you before, I was one of the early persons in Tennessee. Uh, there were others, but I uh, to shoot these things in matches, you know, the 22 and the 23, and shot the heck out of one practice and just in matches and, and, and reloaded oh, thousands of rounds for it. So I've had a lot of experience with the 40, and, uh, and I still like it. I know it may be dead. But I like it. I'd feel fine just loading up and carrying it tomorrow. Uh, it's a, again, it's a heavier bullet. It, you're going to have more muzzle energy. You know, uh, it just is. So, if it's you know, we we don't get the ballistics arguments and all that. But it, it's good. It's good. Just nine millimeters is good too. Forty five. They're all great. Uh, and then of course the origins of it. I won't get into a long story. I've kept you too long already. But you know. Jeff Cooper was a big 10 millimeter advocate, you know, especially after that uh, FBI shooting in Miami. You know, what was it around, you know, in the 80s, they came out with the, the 10 millimeter and the FBI adopted it after that shooting. And, and, but then it was too much for agents to, to really learn to shoot well, you know, a lot of whom did have much 
experience shooting so here here take this 10 millimeter <laughs> and so they loaded it down to the point where it was really about like a 40 right and so then you got this big 10 millimeter cartridge big gun and it's just a power factor what i'm shooting today uh more or less and so smith and wesson came up with the 40 cartridge right and so well we might as well have a smaller cartridge we can get a bunch of them in a nine millimeter size handgun they did it and Glock did it, almost beat them or did to the punch, came out with a Glock 40, 22, you know, and 40 caliber and, and, and it was very, very successful. Uh, so that was, and then of course, you know, Cooper and everybody that, that, that uh, hated to see what had happened to the 10 called this the 40 short and weak because it was a shorter, weaker cartridge than the 10 millimeter. Yeah, no joke. Uh, but I think too many people compare it just in favor of the 40. They compare it too much with a 10 millimeter. It's not a 10 millimeter. When I think of 40, I compare it with a nine, more or less, or 45, but a nine, okay? Same gun, almost the same capacity, and just as easy to carry, uh, but more power. You know, so, but do you really need it? I know that's another big argument, of course, but that's the way I compare it. So short and weak is kind of silly to me. Uh, you know, a, a 10 millimeter, hot, loaded, 10 millimeter is short and weak compared with a 44 Magnum, right? Or a 454, the 44 Magnum is short and weak compared with 454. 454 is weak and short compared with a five, you know, that never ends, right? So I'll quit philosophizing on that. But anyway, uh, to the point again, you know, the, the new Glock 23, is uh it's a nice gun it is the gen 5 a lot of those things i don't necessarily like about the gen 5 in general and i'm not sure exactly what i think about the heavy slide uh it has its pros and its cons as i pointed out so you decide if you're interested in uh, that caliber it is the 30 year anniversary of the uh, pretty much of the uh, 40 caliber so maybe you want to buy one just to celebrate that <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, lots of times during ammo shortages, you can find 40. Uh, but it's so bad right now that that's not necessarily the case. Oh, and you do have, as you realize, a 20, was it a 22 round mag? Yeah, for a 40. So we'll finish up with that, okay? See if that works in it. Ah, oh, wow. Like John, I must have crammed that very last round in it. We haven't shot the paper. Oh, man. What am I doing waiting so late to smoke pot, too? I'm going to smoke a little pot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I find that that sight comes right back down on target. Uh. Yeah. Nice pistol, uh, you would find it uh, much more pleasant to shoot, as I said, for a 40. Because 40 is, it is snappy. That's the word everybody uses, so I'll use it too. Uh, nobody has it trademarked yet, so I'll use it. So, yeah, the 40 is a snappy handgun. As I've said before, I think that's a lot of the reasons. Uh, some people, not everybody, but some people badmouth it so much. And maybe the reason they even went back to a 9, because they really couldn't handle it. Okay? They could not handle it, maybe whether they're in competition or whatever they're doing, they just could not shoot it as well. And then it's easier to badmouth, you know, let me go to something a little bit uh, less powerful that I can handle, and then I'll just spend the rest of my life badmouthing the 40 Smith & Wesson. How's that? <laughs> no, uh, that's probably not many. Not a lot of difference in handgun calibers. They're handgun calibers, okay? lower much lower velocity than a rifle so it's not like anybody has a nuclear weapon and a handgun in their holster regardless of the caliber but anyway the 40 does catch a lot of negative publicity and uh, it has dropped in popularity a great deal in uh, recent years uh, i still like it I, I typically don't carry it or even shoot it much but i've got two or three guns in it chambered in it and i still like it as far as this firearm, it's not one I would buy myself. Uh, I still prefer the smaller slide and lighter slide, but this one is, uh, it's easier to shoot well, I will say, okay? So, new Glock uh, 23 in Gen 5 with a heavier slide, okay? Might be what you're looking for. Might not, though. Life is good. Uh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh.
Oh, man. Oh, hey. Didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 4 5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.